you talked about moving a fire tower, and you did, and it, it's a story unto itself. First of all, Todd, where did the fire tower come from? Uh, came from uh, Deer Town in Park Rapids, uh, Minnesota. What, what is Deer Town? Is a... um, Deer Town was uh, an animal uh, zoo like uh, that they had, and uh, the tower was built back in 1963. And from there on, uh, that's where it came from. Roy, how did you get, you're a friend of, how did you get involved in this? you have an interest in fire towers? I've known Todd when he was 17 and sheet rocked my house. So I've known him a few years. And you became a party of this? Were you involved in the dismantling and moving the tower also? Oh, yes. Uh, Todd spoke for years of building a tower. Well, when the bank took over that property, this fire tower was on it. And before, and Todd said, you know, he says, that would be great. So we went right to the bank and the thing was settled before the sun went down. He owned the tower. <laughs> that fast. Uh, the bank got the Deer Park property, was foreclosed? Yes. Or something yes. like that? Yes, yes, And then you made arrangements with the bank. Was the tower always there at Deer? Yes. Yes. So the DNR, or the Department of Conservation, put the tower up a long time ago? Yes, back in the 63. Yes. Okay, oh, well that, okay. Then yeah. Deer Town built around it. Yeah. So to speak. Well, now you got a job on your hand. <laughs> um, let's start by, how did you dismantle this thing? Did you have a crane, or did you do it by hand, or block and tackle? You're looking at the two cranes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we went up to the center with a, uh, a 20, what was it, 20 feet? 40. A 40 foot uh, boom. And, at the uh, center of the tower? Yep, all the way up to the top. And then we had a jib boom uh, sticking off of that, off to the side. Where did you find this booms at? Uh, on my property. <laughs> was it something you used before, or did you have to make this? Well, we had to modify a few things. And uh, I've been in custom welding and machining since 72 up here. So it's been a collection that gets gathered. Jesus. So you had all the all the right pieces to, to help to take this thing down. Yeah. Yes. Any, any block and tackle? or. We converted an old wood splitter. We put a winch on it, used its hydraulic pump, and that was our, we run cables up to pulleys and lowered the stuff with the pulleys, with the cable through the pulleys. How'd you get a log splitter? That just goes, use the hydraulic arm? Or? We were using basically the motor and the pump. Okay and we attached the rest of it to it. The hydraulic motor and the winch and the cable, we had attached to it. And that was your power to run this cable? Yeah. On yes, wheel. yes. That sounds like a heck of a modification job for a wood splitter. Yeah. Is that <laughs> yes. wood splitter still here someplace? Uh, it's at my place. Yeah. Oh, okay. It got changed back to a wood splitter. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, you're taking this down, each beam is pretty heavy. Uh, but the, the center pole is what you, and then you ran a jib over from that, and the, that was higher than the tower then. How'd you, yes. did you get to take the, the top section off by its? Yes. Yes. But how did the jib, how did the pole go up to the center if the, if the cab is in the way? Uh, that, that floor in that cab was the first thing to disappear. Okay. It was rotten. Yeah. Okay. So it went up through the, the peak, or how'd you? Did right, you take right up to the peak, and then when we took the panels off the top, then we just brought them down a short ways and hooked them on and lowered them. Okay, you took all the panels and the roof off. Yeah. Yes. And then, then you started working on. Then the next thing was to work on the, the cross arms or. Yes. And you, cross arms. Uh, we have uh, the stairways, platforms, and the corner posts. The stairways are really heavy. Yeah. They were the heaviest single item to come down. Yeah, I can see that. If you got a long stringer, a lot of, a lot of weight there. 
Yes. But, but the hydraulic wrenching system you had, that was enough power to handle that kind of weight. Oh, yes. Wow, I can't even picture that. Yeah. Now, once you started to lower all these pieces, how, how long how long did it take once you started dismantling the piece section? How many days did you spend lowering each piece? You're spoiling the conversation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it took, what, two or three months? Two months to get it done? At least, yeah. yes. Was that consecutive every day or just when the weather was good? Uh, when the weather was good and we'd just continue until bad weather, then we wouldn't go up there. Did you avoid um, windy days? The yeah. Would be yeah. Flying all over the piece? Yeah. Wow, what a, what a project. All right, now you've got the pieces on the ground. Did you have to number them a certain way? So yes. You know where they went? Yeah. Color, color I color. numbered every joint where they went. Otherwise, there was, on some of the pieces, there was such a slight variation, but if you got one mixed up with another, things wouldn't fit. Wow. Numbers, did you use any color coding at all? Just numbering. Just numbering that. Yeah. Letters and numbers. Okay. Okay, well, now it's on the ground in pieces. Now the heavy duty work, the footing. Most people would put a new footing. This was a lot cheaper, but a lot more work to take the old footings out. Uh, we did not know what type of steel work the pads were down in those footings. So it was either making forms and guessing, or we'd have to pound one apart with a sledgehammer. So we thought we'd give it a try on taking the footings too. And we had them numbered where they went, and we used block. Uh, block and tackle, a big beam on a truck. How, no, he pulled them out of the ground with his pickup truck. <laughs> we had a bunch of snatch blocks. Right. Yep. That give you power. The yep. power. Yep. And they, we put some planks down. He dug next to them, put some planks down, and then pulled them out with his pickup and different ones thought we'd never get that tower out of there but they changed their mind when they saw the footings on the ground. Who is this now? Oh, just people. random people. Oh random people. Yeah. Yes. Well I never heard of footings being taken out before that's kind yeah. of unique. Yes. We're, we're looking at photos of that we're talking about. It. Yeah. Right, yes. Now you got the footing above the ground you got to get it on a truck of some sort to Yes, uh, we hired uh, Thielen's precast to come in and uh, load them up on their truck and then haul them up to the spot. That's a concrete company, yeah. precast? Yeah. So they had the truck that could pick up this weight. Yes. All right, now the fire tower is up on the hill and we'll look at it in a moment or so. How'd you get the footings? I don't see any road. How'd you get the footings up to the fire tower? Uh, the new site? The trail that your uh, truck is on, that's, oh. a, that's the road that's going oh, you up could drive. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, now you've got all the pieces on the ground. You got them all numbered, you got the footings out, and you're bringing them back to your place here. And now you have to, how did you carry all the steel? Do you have a low boy or something? On my pickup. Just on the pickup, just hanging out my, the back. Just on my pickup, right on the bed. Yep. Because some of those pieces were pretty long. Uh, there was a rack on the cab, ah. and we used a, uh, canoe. a canoe thing in the back plugged in, and just Put as much on there as we dared to. <laughs> That's a dick. Yeah. If it didn't bend, it's okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, now we got all these pieces. Now, and the company did they haul the footings one at a time? No. Four. No. Uh, we we hauled one on a trailer, and it was just too heavy for the trailer. So when. What kind uh, of trailer, first of all? A uh, 16 foot. Uh, no, it was my 18 foot. Yes. Yeah. Three axle trailer. And Three axles and one footing was too heavy for yeah, it? Yeah, it was 7,200 pounds each. Oh. So we hired Thielens to come in and he hauled all three of them, the, the rest of them. All in one shot? All in one shot. And he could, he, he could get up that road okay to unload it? Yeah, he backed right up there. Oh, I'll be darned. Then when it became time, he reset them in the holes that we had dug. Yeah. Okay. Then we put beams over them so we could put, uh, pick them up and according to the dimensions, set them where they go. Yep. 
Now, what do you, you use to get them all level? A, a transit. transit. A transit, and you, uh, did you have to pack, once you dug the hole, did you have to pack the dirt down so it wouldn't settle? Those footings are all four within one eighth of an inch of the other. So you, you dig the holes, they're all equal, but after a while, yeah. once you put it in, wouldn't it settle a little bit? When you backfill, you flush the backfill in with water. Yeah. That would go underneath and... Yes. Yeah. Okay, you backfill it, put some water in, and that would go underneath the footing to keep it for... Yeah. Now, once you started to backfill, did you have to check with the transit to make sure it was level? Oh, yeah. And if it wasn't, what would what, 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 you do? Pick well, it up and put some more under it. <laughs> pick it up with the guy from the concrete? No, no we'd we, put our beams up again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you put your own pick out of the yeah, beams, yeah, and you yeah. can raise it like that and yeah. up and down. So you had to pack some sand underneath, wet sand, so it would settle? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We flushed all the fill back in with water. Okay. That works good. When we dug the holes, we made sure that we didn't go beyond our digging. So we're hand scraping right down to solid ground. So we didn't have to pre, you know, put okay. you didn't have too to pre pound. Much. Yeah. Back to, you didn't, because you, you, okay, you didn't go too deep, so you had to back pound. Right. Okay, now the four footings are on the ground, and how do you get the first, the first beam up? What, what holds it for you? Uh, there's uh, steel coming out of the concrete footings with uh, mounting bolts. So that's where your four spires go up, four corners, and you just bolt. But they're them. but they're pretty heavy beams. Uh, they're uh, what four by four, hot dip galvanized, 20 yeah. feet long. So what'd you what'd you pick the beam up with? I have a a backhoe with a front end motor. Oh okay okay. So you got some power there. Yeah. To pick it up and bolt it in place. Yeah. But and the, the, those bolts were enough to hold it there. They got the rest of them up and yep. cross arms. Yep. Okay. Didn't know how much how much power there was with the beam because it's leaning a little bit. Yep. Yep. Wow. Now we did the thing just in reverse. As we came down with the tower dismantling it, we lowered that center spire. Now when we're ready to go back up, we put the center spire in and just reverse the process. And what's now holding the center spire? What's holding it? What's keeping it vertical? A big beam coming across. Okay. Yep. And what is this made of, this center spire? Aluminum. So Alum it's, so big it's, aluminum pipe or something? Yeah, it was a big flagpole. Aluminum flagpole. And this is 20 feet? 20 uh, 40 feet? feet long. That's one heck of a big flagpole. Yes, it is. Where'd you find it? <laughs> in his archives. <laughs> in your collection of stuff. Yeah. Yes. You know, you guys make a perfect television show called American Pickers. Yeah. You ever watch that? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, maybe I better send him an email. Oh, no. To find something like that in your supply. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. So, all right. Now we've now we got the, the little gin pole, as some people call it. And you're putting the pieces up one at a time. How much time did you spend putting these pieces up? <clears throat> Did it go up faster than it came down, or about the same? Um, I think it went up faster because it's more straighter this way. It was a little crooked when we took it down. Why was it crooked? Footing set or something? It may have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the, the tower is what? What length? Uh, 100 foot to the platform. Oh, no, from the ground to the platform, going yeah. feet. Yeah. There's uh, 14 flights, nine steps each. Oh, you got okay. You got corner to corner then. Uh, no platform to platform. This uh, this ain't the corner to corner one. Oh, okay. All right. This is identical to Itasca State Park Tower. Okay. Yeah. And that one they beefed up with a lot of steel because there's so many climbers on it. Yeah. In that case, well, with the tower here and you being close to Itasca, you could literally use those two towers to triangulate yes. a fire location. Sure. Uh, can you see? The fire tower at this Camp Wilderness from here? Uh, no, not at Camp Camp Wilderness, but we can see the one in the park at Itasca. Okay, that's interesting to know. So yep. you, if the fire season really starts getting bad, put somebody in each tower. Yeah. To give them a fire thunder with a compass rose, and we have a way to triangulate. Yeah. Yes. Well, now how? What year did you start taking this tower down? Uh, right down? around August of '06. Okay. And uh, then we got the uh, footings in and part way up in 07. And then uh, uh, 
in August of 07, I ended up with uh, four-stage cancer. Um, so nice that kind of put the halt to it for a few years. Would. And then we finally finished it in uh, uh, July 3rd of uh, 2011. Did you put glass back in the window or leave it open? No, it never had glass. So leave it open, the air can go through, yeah. it will dry out. It's the same as they do at the park. And yeah. at the, have you been over to the county mm -hmm. fairgrounds in Bemidji to see the tower there? Yeah. If you go on, if you go inside the mm -hmm. no. Forest Education Center, um, I do believe, yeah. Okay. Yep. We'll make it a point. Sure. If you if you guys are in Bemidji, you give me a call. I'll come out there and open it for you. Yep. Anytime. And I renewed the floor up there, and I'm renewing the steps right now too. What kind of wood are you using? Uh, treated. Uh, okay. Two by six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's a job in itself. Yeah. Holy cow. To run to run power all the way up there for a skill saw and drills and take your tools all the way up by hand and yeah. Well, I got many trips. I had my lawnmower attached to a pulley on the bottom and a pulley on the top and one guy sat on the tractor and I'd be on, on the radio and pull it up and he'd pull the plank up from back the lawnmower up, pull the plank up, tell him what I needed, he lowered the rope, put some weight on it, cut another board, tied it and backed the lawnmower up. I didn't have to carry anything. There you go. Tools in the bucket, just use the lawnmower. Yep. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, you were very familiar with those 14 flights of stairs. <laughs> it is 14. Yeah. Okay, well, well, we'll take a look at that in a second. If I missed anything we should be talking about, as far as moving this tower, I thought one heck of a project. Well, the, the footings, uh, when we went to put them back in, uh, Thielen set them down in the hole, then we bridged from each side of the big hole with uh, four by fours or six by sixes, and then we ran a big beam from one side to the other of the hole over the uh, footing. Bolts. Make sure the bolts are right? Yeah, and then we put a big uh, chain hoist hanging there and lifted up the thing and turned it right where we needed it and set it down, the so footing. You could turn the footing yeah. so that the bolts would line up on all. Right. Using using a two by six um, no um, well, how big was that beam eight inch eight inch beam yeah okay yeah. not that because those bolts if they're not right then yeah so yeah talking about exact measurement the old fashioned way yeah. makes you appreciate how they put these towers up in the 1930s probably yes. the same way you guys did yeah yes when they they poured fresh concrete. In some of these places, I can't figure out how they got the concrete there. And the footings are uh, 87 inches high. They're four foot at the base. They come up 20 inches, and then they then they come into three foot, and from there on, it tapers up to 18 inches. Okay, and the, the bolts, I assume, go all the way down to the yeah. footing, an eight, eight foot bolt or yeah. whatever. Water project. Well, we're gonna walk up to the hilltop and take a look at the tower. Yeah. What was that again? I said it's the biggest erector set that Roy and I ever put up. Roy, would you do it again? I told him if he found another one, forget about it. <laughs> I didn't quite use those words. <laughs> okay, and, got it. And this, uh, this tower was uh, hot dip galvanized and it was like brand new when we took it apart, even the bolts. No rust at all. Says a lot for how hot dip galvanized that Yes, it? yeah. Oh, yes. I could not have gotten interested if the basic structure wasn't that nice. Yeah. Makes you wonder why they don't make trees. Put all the bolts back in. We took all the bolts out. Yeah. It worked nice. On July 3rd, when it was all finished, what it year? was a uh, 2011. Yeah, okay. It was a proud, at least a moment to us. We put his dad's service flag up on the flagpole. Yeah. Wow, piece of history. Yeah. Yes. Did you have on that special occasion? Did you have family here and so forth? Uh, no, 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 just uh, wife and uh, Roy and I. Okay. Right. And uh, the flag is five by nine and a half.
What's this now? Yeah, this is the winch system that uh, went on the uh, wood splitter. Warren, where did the flagpole come from? I saw it hanging in the top of a fellow's repair shop. And I said, what are you going to do with that flagpole? Ah, he says, I was going to put it up, but get it out of here. So I did. I got it out of there. Now, when you took it out of here, was that in, with in mind you were going to use it for the tower, or just you wanted to take it? Take it no, 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 no. This was, oh my gosh, oh, 45 right. years ago. Oh, okay. Okay. We didn't do it just for the tower then. No. Okay. And the little gin pole across arm here, where, where'd that come from? That came from the where I have my had my steel. It was something I acquired over the years. You must have a warehouse that's 100 feet by 100 feet. No, it's 40 by 80. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it's the property. Yep. A lot of this stuff sat outside. Yeah, yeah, understand. Yeah, uh, the four uh, uprights, uh, they're 20 feet long. They're four by four hot dip galvanized. And if you see up there, that's the junction. And once they were all up, then we put that heavy wrap all the way around that you see up there. First, wait a minute, let's make it back up here. Um, what do you mean by heavy wrap? The uh, outside uh, four by four wrap. How'd you get from one side to the next? We had it all planked in. That's a lot of wood to go all the way across. Oh yeah. yes. Nothing in, nothing in the middle to keep it from bouncing? Nope. No. How'd you get the planks up there? We, uh, with the with the winch. With the winch. Yep, okay. With the winch, yep. And that cable there. That. Yep. That's the cable that supported everything. You oh, it's still, go, still going up there. Oh yes, up over a pulley. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, if you notice, with the uh, platforms and the stairways, they came down in one section. At a piece, uh, at a time. Okay. Yeah, I forgot we left that <coughs> pulley up there. <laughs> Still goes to the top. Yeah. It's a little spongy, why is that? Uh, that's the nature of the steel. And it, if it wasn't a little bit flexible, you'd have a flop problem. Yeah. Flexibility. Yes. As we were taking, <laughs> this is sort of comical, taking it down and putting it up, I'd get in a certain spot and I'd start to jump like that. And these things were flexible. He'd say, will you stop that? <laughs> it's a little concerning. <laughs> I'm going to back off here so I have to. Climb to the top was a bit precarious because the fencing hasn't been put along the rails of the platforms and the, a lot of the wood hasn't been changed. It's an ongoing process. But that didn't seem to stop these guys up and down, up and down. I can't imagine making 14, 15 trips a day up that 100 foot tower and carrying their tools. But they did.
you'll notice the rust color. Yes. But you'll notice there's areas where you can see where they had chicken wire. Yes. So somebody couldn't fall. Right. Okay, what do we got here? We got a flagpole holder. Well, when we decided to put the flagpole over here, we had the, the little house up and we made drawings. And we actually hoped everything would fit when we brought it all up. By gosh, it fit just like you see it. We tightened the bolts. And that was the the project on the fla flagpole. That yeah, looks like heavy steel. Yes, it is. How come he didn't use aluminum? Was that, was it, that pipe was available or what? Uh, I don't like aluminum. That's a good answer. Because this stuff is strong and it's flexible. Now a piece of two inch pipe would have bent with the winds we've had. Oh, sure. Yes. But this one, it'll flex. But it, uh, there's no chance it's going to bend. Makes sense. And you got a steel cable to raise and lower the flag? Yes. Goes down into a pulley here. Well. You can get at that from the platform. Right from here. Yes. Okay. The eye bolt that you see in the top peak, uh, this didn't come with one. But that was put up so you could hang a lantern or something up there. Oh, okay. On the sides, the wind was blowing so bad that you didn't dare lift them off. So we got a we got a screw on each side just with a little bit holding. Then the wind would quit, and one of us would holler, "Now!" <laughs> and we lift the panels off and down with them. Watch out for that step, it's a doozy. Gotcha. <laughs> After the climb, it was back on the ground and over to the log house to talk to Todd's wife, Nadine. You know what this is on your right? It's a cream separator. Not many people know what that is. You have to be born in the 40s to know what that is. How did you find out about this project of moving the fire tower? to hear. Was it a surprise or did you, did you have a discussion about it? Well, Todd has been discussing getting a fire tower for many, many years. Okay. 
And as soon as he found out that Deertown was selling, uh, he decided to inquire about it right away. So it's, it's, it's been an idea that's been there for some time. Yes, yes. Okay. So it really wasn't a surprise, but it was... I guess you could say it was kind of a surprise that he actually did it. <laughs> <laughs> I must say it's rather unusual. Not yes. many people have the skill, the time, the patience to move a 100-foot fire tower. Right. It's kind of rare. Right. Oh, okay. What's next? What project is next? Yeah, what's next? Like nothing that, that big. Oh. Probably. Who knows? Well, there's a lot of projects around a home, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we, en we enjoy going up the tower, and we spend many, many hours up there. Sunset? Yep. Sunset is, is the best, and just yeah. laying back and visiting and taking who, friends up there and family. and. Who knows? Someday you may be spotting fires from up here. You know, there's been a few times where we've thought we've seen smoke, and I... Wondered if we should call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. But uh, watching for storms is is really fun. Watching for storms. Watching for storms. And then you have to leave at a certain point. If you see lightning in the distance, then you get off because yes. there's be lightning there. Yeah. Many times we've gotten down just in time. It will lighten up your day. Yes. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Next, we were invited into the log house that Todd had built. I'm not sure what the significance of the feathers are sticking in the wall. I forgot to ask Todd. Maybe next time. You call this an, an, a neural? A burl. A burl. Yep. Okay. And you found that on your property? Yeah. God. Now, had you planned to put it there all along or you just... Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Now, the logs I'm seeing... What are the logs? Norway, they white are, pine? They are Norway. Okay, you talked about the walls being different. Yeah, those are uh, spruce. And the ceiling is tongue and groove, uh, knotty pine. I see you're a fan of bee's nest or hornet's yeah, nest. Yeah, I collect them. Yep. Is, this, is this hornet or bee? Uh, I can't uh, tell the difference. Um, Probably wasp. Wasp. Or... Wasp, okay. And right above my head, if I can get him in there. How many nest bees, how many nests do you have? Uh, I collected about 45 of them that are hanging in the house. All 45 are in some place yeah. in the house? Yeah. This concludes our backcountry story on dismantling and re erecting a forest fire lookout tower by hand, no crane. That's why I call these gentlemen engineering entrepreneurs. The next time we go to visit this two, it'll be over at Roy's place. You won't believe the train setup. It's not your normal hobby train. The engine weighs about four tons. My thanks to Todd and Roy for allowing me to come to their place and tell the story about the fire tower in northern Minnesota.